thank you, Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. Come to us with a message from God. Dr. Terrence Jenkins. God bless you. Praise God. Jesus Christ. But I'd like to title my message the absolute that is not obsolete. The absolute that is not obsolete. Our text is in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 11 through 14. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. When you have it, would you please stand? Verse 11. But Christ being come and a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ? Somebody would just say that with me, how much more shall the blood of Christ? For through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Father, I thank you tonight for your word. And I would ask that you would take this lump of clay tonight and let us anoint it with the anointing of God. Your word is already anointed, so anoint these lips of clay tonight. That the words that are spoken might be words that will encourage and strengthen and build up your children. Perchance there's anyone in this house tonight that don't know you or are not sure of their standing with you. I pray tonight that this might be the time when they will surrender their life completely to Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. You may be seated if you would please. I do want to take my time just a little bit. It has been stated that we live in times of change, in changing times. And truly, we are in a changing world. I asked my congregation some months ago, how many of them liked change? And almost all of them put their hand up. I said, now I'd like to know who's going to tell the truth. <laughs> because nobody likes change. Because change gets us out of our comfort zone. One of my elders came to me and said, Pastor, you have a way of getting us out of our comfort zone. And it doesn't feel good. But once it's done and we're out, we don't want to go back to our comfort zone. And so we are creatures of habit and we do not always welcome things that would bring us out of these areas or shake us, if you would, out of the comfort zone where we are. Everything around us would testify to the certainties of change. Even around here, and this is, I've been here about two days, or a day and a half, and, and just to look around, I, I can easily tell in conversations with some 
folk that there is change in the wind. The cars change, the clothing change. And for those of us that have some hair, our styles change. Amen. One person put it this way, said, if I could find something absolute to stand on, I could shake the world. It seems that there are no more absolutes. And the sad part about me is that in a lot of our Christian world, there's not a lot of absolutes anymore. People don't like to hear the truth. Things are changing so rapidly that you go get something today and within the next two or three days the whole thing's out of date because things have changed so much. And so tomorrow it's obsolete. But I have news for you tonight. I know something that is absolute that will never be obsolete. A man named Elton Trueblood was once quoted as saying, Is there anything in this world of doubt and change that we can truly believe? And stand on though the heavens fall. I kind of like to think that maybe what he was really saying is that anything in this world that's perfect and that will stand no matter what. And the answer for most people is no. But for the child of God.
was established. The old was good, but it couldn't take away sins. It could just be used as a covering for one more year. But every year the offering had to be made. But all with the better covenant come. And there was a once for all sacrifice made. Oh, his name is Jesus Christ. I want you to know tonight that he's the only one that I know that ever made up a will. Then died to bring it into effect. Came back to life so to make sure that the will is carried out. And so became the test taker of his own will. And today we can enter into the covenant relationship with Jesus Christ because of the blood that he sheds. Christ died for us. And not only so, but 
we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received atonement. Atonement comes from the Greek word katalaj, which means to reconcile. And so the atonement of the blood really, as it's related, it refers to Israel's highest religious holiday. And, and, and the effort, or really a feeble effort, that man put forth to try to become one with God. But it was so feeble, man could not do it. But it took Jesus Christ in giving his blood, his life's blood, it took that to reconcile us back to God. There was no reconciliation without the blood. But the blood of Jesus Christ healed a rift between God and man. And watch this. When it did, righteousness and peace kissed each other and mercy and truth met together. I like that. Hallelujah to God. Can I tell you the process of the atonement for a moment? And I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm just going to give it to you real quickly and so you write it down. The process of the atonement in the Old Testament under the Levitical system was this. The priest had to work alone first. The priest had to work alone. Secondly, the priest had to lay aside his glorious garment that he wore. The distinguishing, beautiful garment that he wore as a priest, he had to lay it aside. Thirdly, he had to wash and to rid himself of all ceremonial defilement. Thirdly, fourthly, the priest had to then offer a sin offering for himself before he could offer for the people. He had to offer for himself. And the fifth, he burned incense to bring glory to God. I, I'm going to throw in right there. I just need to I have to throw in right there. Now we don't burn incense to bring glory to God. We offer praise and bring glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the living. The Bible tells us that he is enthroned upon the praises of his people. Literally, he will sit upon your praises when you begin to praise him no matter what comes your way. You determine you're going to praise him anyway and he will sit up on your praises and your praises will rise up to him as a sweet smelling savor. You don't have to burn incense. Your praises will be the sweet smelling savor that will rise up in his nostrils Jesus, in type 
and symbolism. Fulfilled every one of these aspects that the priest had to do with one exception. And that was Jesus did not have to present a sin offering for himself. Hallelujah. He became the sin offering for us. And the sacrifice became the sacrifice. That's my God. And that's the atonement for your sin and for my sin. There is so much more to it than simply saying he was beaten and he was bruised and he was put on the cross. When that happened, when he said it is finished, he looked into the face of all of hell and he said, you tried, devil, but you couldn't stop. God's plan of redemption has been completed for mankind. Don't need another sacrifice. Don't need another offering. It's done. The great transaction's done. And I am my Lord's and he is mine. All because of the blood. Secondly, the authority of the blood. The scripture is in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Oh. This is the reason that God chose. Abel's offering on the kings. Y'all know the story. You see what happened was this king decided he would do it a different way. King thought that he could get rid of another way. King thought, I don't have to worry about shedding of blood. I can just do it by works. But Paul said it's not by works of righteousness that we're saved. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works of righteousness, lest any man should boast. And the reason was, the life is in the blood. Cain and shed Abel's blood. He killed him. The life being in the blood, God said, does not the voice of your brother cry out to me from the ground? You shed his blood and went in the ground, but it's crying out because life is in the blood. Life is in the blood and it's crying out to me. Cain, works don't do it. If you go and do what's proper, and if you bring a blood sacrifice, will you not be accepted as well? But Cain thought, I don't have to worry about religion, what I can do is work my way in. But beloved, let me tell you tonight, there is no salvation in any other than through Jesus Christ. There is no other name given under heaven among men, whereby we can be saved but through Jesus. There is no other way but the blood to make atonement for us. When Jesus Christ gave his life and he was crushed just like you would crush a grape for grape juice or you would crush an olive to get olive oil it's pulverized and Jesus was pulverized until the very life left his body so that he might give you and I life eternal. That's the authority of the blood. It speaks and it still speaks today. The blood 
gives us the authority to enter into the holy place. Under the old sacrificial system, the old Levitical system, no one could go into the holy place. The high priest once a year to offer his sacrifices, but nobody else could go in. But oh, the blood of Jesus, it ran the veil of the temple from the top to the bottom. And it said, it is open, no way into the holy of holies. He's wide open, just accept the covering of the blood and walk on into his presence. chapter 10 and verse 19 puts it this way. Should having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Tonight we don't have to go in and timidity. We don't have to go in and feel bashful about it. But we can boldly enter in and say, Daddy, I want a blessing. I want a healing. I want my children saved. Daddy, it's mine because of the blood Mind because of the blood, boldness to enter in. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. 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 Pastor had gone out and talked with him, got him to agree to come to church. He sat through the service. Nearly near the end of the service, the pastor prayed. Very mild, very meek. Very timid. At the end of the sermon, it says the young pastor is shaking hands at the door. The old farmer comes by and he shakes his hand. And the young pastor asks him how he enjoyed the service. And he says, well, sir, I enjoyed the service very good. You had a lovely sermon. But he said, if I had a son of mine that would come to me and would ask me for something the way that you call him your heavenly father and you so mildly talked with him, he said, I would rather give him a stick. The reason being, he said, come home with me. Come over. You're a child of God. Come over. You don't have to be afraid. What do you need from Him tonight? Come over. What is it that you want in your life? Come over. What is it you want in your home? Come over. What is it you want with your children? Come over. What is it you want if you're working tonight? Come over. What is it you want if you're not working and you want a job tonight? Come over. Boldly into His throne room. Present the petition before him and lay it out. And say, here it is. If need be, write it down and present it to him as Hezekiah did with the letter of the king from King Sennacherib. Write it down and say, here God, here is my petition. I can't really put it into words, but I can write it down. I want you to have a look at it and read it for yourself because this is my heart. And I want you to know that God is not illiterate. He can still read. All the authority. Thirdly, the authenticity. No idea. No idea. I said it right at the beginning. Authenticity of the blood. That just goes to tell you the education doesn't make you be able to pronounce words properly. <laughs> The blood is authentic and powerful because of the virgin birth of the Savior. There is no human blood 
that flowed through his veins. It was not the blood of Shosen. It was the blood that originated with the Holy Spirit. Is it any wonder that the Word of God declares that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin? We have a lot of wonderful theologians who think there's something special in these days that are now trying to tell us that the Bible is not all correct. It just simply contains the Word of God, but it is not the inerrant Word of God. We have them that will tell us nowadays because of what we know about artificial insemination and so on that any virgin today can have a child. I've got news for every one of these old fogies. 2,000 years ago, there was no artificial insemination. And the only way it could happen then was when the Holy Ghost came down and said, Mary, thou art highly favored. Hallelujah. But young teenager, thou art highly favored. You have found favor with God. I mean, she's not in church every day. She's not at the, at, at, at the temple every day. She's at home with mother and she's learning to do the girl things because one day she's going to get married. But oh, the Holy Ghost comes down when there's nobody around her and says, you are highly favored. Mm, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you and that holy thing that shall be in you shall be called the Son of the Highest. He shall be called Emmanuel for he shall save his people from their sins. I want you to know that she probably did not get a great reception when she went back to daddy's house and said, I'm pregnant. I know my younger daughter today would not get a good reception, so I can imagine that feeling. My younger daughter is 21 years of age and on her own now for the last year working two jobs and so on. But I want you to know she came home one day and said, Daddy, I'm pregnant and not married. Boy, I bet on you, she had a time to pay. You tell me you're not married? And 
when you're pregnant, he's got the Holy Ghost in it. Who is the Holy Ghost? Amen. I, I can't tell you a whole lot about him. All I can tell you is that he told me that I was highly favored and that God has chosen me and that I was going to have Jesus. What? Now you lost it, girl. Go to your room while I figure out what to do with you. You're going to have what? Jesus. And he's going to do what? Save people. Girl, you have company. I, I, I have to find the insane asylum someplace for you. Highly favored. Huh? Highly favored. We, 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 uh, uh, see, Brother Blair, I, I don't know in Jamaica. I, I have no idea. But in North America, including Canada and the United States, it's considered that if you're highly favored, you have money rolling out your pockets. I mean, nothing could go wrong. Everything goes right. Everybody just pours it on you and everything you want just name it. It comes into existence. I want you to know that the word comes into existence. You've got to live a lifestyle that's consistent with the word of God. And when you live a lifestyle consistent with the word of God, then your faith can rise up because of your praises rising up to him. He smiles on you and you begin to see his face. And when you begin to see his face, he just says, I can't help but bless my children. Then what you call into existence comes. Highly favored. I, I would like to know who it was that made the travel arrangements. I mean, she's in the tri third trimester. You know why she left home and went with her engaged spouse instead of married spouse? She wasn't married. She was simply a spouse, so she was simply engaged to him to be married. And yet she has to leave home and go with him to his place. It was because she brought a disgrace on the family. Daddy didn't want her around no more. She's out of favor. <laughs> what a story. And somebody made some wonderful travel arrangements in the third trimester. The limousine that they ordered didn't work, so they got a Volkswagen. <laughs> I mean, they didn't even get a bucket master. They just got the back of a donkey. Can you imagine bumping along in that when you're just about nine months? Oh, the blood of Jesus. 
Crack is a music of a reckless man. And the accomplishments of the blood of Jesus. There has never been another agent or another means so powerful as to accomplish all that Jesus did by shedding his blood. Can I tell you very quickly some of the accomplishments? I don't have the time to go into them. But in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, you find that we were purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, we were, we were told that we are justified by the blood. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, we are told that we are when we have peace with God. By the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 tells us that we are sanctified through his blood. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 tells us that we overcome by the blood. They overcame him by the blood of him. By the word of their testimony. You see, there is no trouble, there is no problem, there is no heartache, there is no trial that you can possibly go through that you cannot overcome if you have your testimony in the blood of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 and verse Peter chapter 1 verse 19 tells us that we are redeemed by the blood. And that's what hit me so reforcibly tonight when the pastor began to sing it about us being redeemed. Oh, songwriter said redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child. Forever I am. Redeemed. Redeemed. <laughs> redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. I am. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 tells us that we are healed by the blood of Jesus. We are healed by the blood. Songwriter put it in this profound question which I answered right at the outset of this message. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Then he asked another question. What can make me whole again? Oh, can we sing?
Thank mm-hmm. you. 